Let me tell you, I am a huge movie buff. Whether it's watching movies, talking about movies, analyzing them, reading the trivia, I do all of that stuff. But one thing that I am particularly interested in is how different directors use color in their movie to create their own unique film look and get their message across. So if you go on Pinterest, for example, and you type in movie color palettes, you will find a lot of great examples of color palettes from iconic scenes from various well-known movies. So I thought, wouldn't it be awesome if we could create a program that could automatically generate these color palettes for movies of our own choice? So I ended up creating a small Python-based program that does just that. The program is simply a single Python-based script that launches an instance of the VLC player and it has been supplemented with several buttons and other GUI elements so we can create our color palettes. The color palettes themselves are created using a color clustering method with an algorithm called k-means. We'll dive into how it works specifically later. First, let's see what we'll be creating. Basically, the program works as follows. You can choose a number of frames you want to extract, thus the number of color palettes you want to generate. Then you can open up any video file, just as you would on a normal VLC player. And then you can just navigate to the frame that you like, hit pause and click the take screenshot button. Repeat this action a couple of more times and once you're done the program closes itself automatically and in the folder where the program script was run. We will now see our newly created color palette image. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to briefly walk you through the steps to take and the thinking process behind how to create such a program. If you want to dig a little bit deeper into the code, I have also written a blog post about it where you can follow everything along. Basically, the main goal of this tutorial is to show you how we can solve a coding problem by leveraging some already pre-built tools out there and build our own solutions on top of it. I also assume you have a basic understanding of Python so you can follow along, but quite frankly the same thing can be replicated with any other popular coding language, so don't worry about that too much. So when I started thinking how to properly build such a program, I immediately thought how cool it would be if we could just open up a video player, click on the frames that we want to use and that would simply just do the job. I could just build my own video player from scratch, but that would be a very big overkill for this task. So instead, I started looking around for some ready to use video players and I realized that there is a Python binding for the popular VLC framework called Python VLC. Awesome, that's just what we need. If we go into their GitHub repository, we can find a lot of cool ready to use example scripts for different Python GUI packages. Now I have to say I tried most of them and I'm using a Mac and the only valid example that seemed to work out of the box was for the PyQt framework, so that's what I ended up using. For Mac users, since the video player needs to be loaded into a CocoView container instance, the PyQt framework was the only one that actually worked this way. For Windows users, this might not be such a problem. Anyway, now that we have our working video player script ready, we can go ahead and create a working project folder, paste the script inside and name it whatever you want. For example, vlcplayer.py. Now let's open up our terminal, navigate to the newly created directory and from here we need to launch our script. So we have to write python vlcplayer.py and there we go. Now that we have successfully launched it, we can see that everything is working great and the UI is similar to the original VLC player. Perfect. So far so good. Since the player is a class of its own, we can inherit this class in our own project and build our functions on top of it. So first we need to comment out the last part of the file which makes it an executable standalone script. We don't need that here since it will no longer be a standalone file. We can now make our own project file, call it whatever we like. I will call it main.py. In our new file, let's start by importing our VLC player class from the original VLC player file. We will also need system, OS, and the PyQt libraries for the time being. So let's import those as well. Next, let's define some global variables that we will be using later. 
We can now create a subclass of our existing class found on the VLC player.py file that will inherit all the original attributes of this class. Let's start by defining our inherited class. Let's call it custom VLC player. We have to pass in the base class as a parameter. And for the initialization, we need to inherit all the attributes of the original class by calling the super function. Okay, remember the script launcher we commented out in the original VLC player class? Now we need to paste that in our new file. I only made a change for the dimension parameters of the original code since we will be adding our custom UI elements later to the player. So far so good. Now if we would launch the program, we would see the same VLC player instance that we saw when we tested out the original VLC player file. That means everything up till now is working as expected. Next, let's add our own custom UI elements. We can now go back to our main.py file and start adding custom components to our custom VLC player class. This next block of code creates our new GUI elements that we will be using for our color palette creation. I tried my best to explain all the code with common blocks so you guys can understand what's going on. Again, if you want to dig a little deeper, check out my blog post on this tutorial for specific details. It's all there. Okay, so now if we run the code again, we see new UI elements. Great! Next, outside the player class, we need to paste in a function that basically listens to any value changes happening throughout the frame capture process. It will then update the UI elements accordingly. We have to uncomment this line, which binds this function to the spinbox event listener. Now that we have a functional VLC player instance in our program, we can access its core functions. And the most important function we need to take advantage of in this project is the video take snapshot function. Let's go ahead and paste in the function for our take snapshot button. It lets us take a snapshot of the frame that is currently visible in the player and save it to a directory of our choice. So we will first snap the frame, save it to our directory, and then use it for our image processing step. We also need to uncomment this code in our init function that connects this function to our take snapshot button. Now if we run the program and start playing the video, we can see that a new PNG image is saved into project root directory every time we press the button. This is exactly how it should work up to this point. Next, let's check out how we can actually generate the color palettes for our extracted frames. The actual name of this method is called color clustering. And if you were to Google this term, you would find a lot of good tutorials on how to do this process. I found this very awesome tutorial by Adrian Rosebrook on color clustering, which we'll use as the basis for our program in this tutorial. On a side note, you should definitely check out Adrian's blog PyImageSearch.com if you want to learn some cool computer vision and deep learning tutorials. Shout out to him, he is a master at this and he has some excellent tutorials on other cool subjects like for example face recognition or object detection. You should definitely check that out. So in Adrian's tutorial there are two key functions that we need to borrow and tweak a bit. Centroid histogram and plot colors. Our version of plot colors will be a bit different. We will use the original code of the centroid histogram though. Go ahead and paste this function inside our main.py file outside the VLC player class as a standalone function. And now go ahead and paste in our plot colors function beneath. Our version will be a bit different because instead of plotting the colors with a width relative to its percentage of how much this color is present in the frame, we want to display all the number of colors in a bar evenly because that's how these color palettes usually look like. Plus I find it to be more visually appealing. In the code above, we first find the centroids that represent the colors with the most frequency. Then we sort these centroids in an ascending matter to form sort of a gradient look from the darkest color to the brightest. Again, this is just to make it look more visually appealing. We also add a margin defined in our global variables, just to add some spacing between the color blocks for a better overall look. 
We have our color generator function ready. We now just have to put it into use in our snapshot taking function. Let's go back to the take snapshot function and append the following code to it. We start by retrieving the image we captured and saved in our root directory. Next, we transform this image into a OpenCV readable format and make a copy of this image to use for our color palette function. Since the k-means algorithm is very labor intensive, we run it on a downscaled version of this image. It does not affect any quality in our case, because even if we scale the image down, we can still have a pretty good understanding of which colors are the dominant ones. We run the two color palette functions we defined earlier, and we end up with a new image, which is our color palette bar. Our final task is to append this bar image to the original one, adding a white margin between the two just for a better look, and our color palette is ready. To provide a better overview of how the taken snapshots look like with their accompanied color palette, and to track the progress of how many snapshots have been taken so far, we can add a list of label elements which hold a thumbnail of the image we just created. To do this in PyQt4, we need to create a pixmap element that can hold images inside of it. We previously created a grid of 10 image boxes as labels. We can now insert the pix map inside these labels. Lastly, we want to keep the final color palette image in memory while we continue the snapshot capture process so we can stitch them all together in the end. This is why we need to add the image to frames taken list, an array that holds all of our images taken so far. There is one more piece of code we need to add to the take snapshot function. With this code block, we check if we have gotten all of our required snapshots. If this is the case, we are ready to stitch them together to form the last image. The code above lets us combine all the images and finish the task by saving the final output into our root directory. We then automatically exit the program. So that's all there is to it. If you wanna play around with the code, maybe tweak it a little bit, modify it, add something on your own, you can find the entire project on my GitHub page. I hope you found this tutorial useful and exciting. My goal is always to show everyone how coding can be really exciting if you use it to create your own cool projects that you're passionate about. So, I hope this has sparked your imagination to go ahead and create your own cool stuff. So that's it for now, I'll see you in the next videos.